call to order the April 7th, 2021 meeting of Narber Borough Council. Mr. West, could you call the roll? Sure enough. Fred Bush. Here. Muna Elshax. Here. Rob McGreevy. Here. Michelle Pananopoulos. Here. Cindy Rickards. Here. Vice President Bob Weisbord. Here. Mayor Andrea Deutsch. Here. And Council President Aaron Mudrick. I am, I am here. Thank you. Um, we will now go into executive session. Um, I would imagine 15 minutes. Uh, and uh, then we will return to public meeting. So Mr. West, if you could move all of the members of the public to the waiting room. Great. All right, well, we kind of thank you all for waiting. Um, I know that took a little longer than 15 minutes, but um, we did accomplish some business, which is great. We met in executive session to discuss uh, real estate matters, matters of potential litigation and personnel matters. Um, I do have some comments this evening. I am proud to announce that the borough uh, has secured a new management to replace Mr. West upon his departure. And um, so a hearty thank you to Mr. West for his service as interim borough manager. We will be losing him to New Britain Township. And oddly, we will be gaining a manager from the borough of New Britain, who would have thunk. So I'd like to paraphrase um, something I have here from our new manager, Samantha Bryant, who has accepted the position and will begin uh, her employment at the end of May. Um, and I'll get back to timings in a moment. But uh, she says, after working for the borough of New Britain for more than five years and living in Pennsylvania for over a decade, I look forward to starting the next chapter of my municipal management career. Um, I know I will bring the same level of enthusiasm and dedication uh, in my current employment to Narberth Borough. Um, I've handled processes as simple as an annual residential rental property registrations and taken on tasks more complex, such as annual budgets. I've reviewed numerous zoning and land development applications, basically everything you would expect in a borough manager. Um, Ms. Bryant also worked uh, to develop the comprehensive plan for New Britain, which is something that we are familiar with having recently done our first year. Um, and Ms. Bryant also brings significant experience in managing and acquiring grants um, to leverage uh, the own borough's own finances and use her financial skills to guide small boroughs with limited resources towards big accomplishments. Uh, um, she has an undergraduate degree in communications in South Carolina and a master's degree in public administration with a certificate in public finance from the University of Pennsylvania. Um, her credentials go on and we are very excited to have her join the Narberth Borough family. So I am pleased to make that announcement. And I know that all of council is unanimous in welcoming her, welcoming her to the borough. Did I lose you all again, maybe? There you are. Did you hear me? I hope so. We heard you, but you may want to shut your video off, Aaron, because you're freezing and then you break up a little bit tonight. Aww. Yeah, kind of like that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like that. So, okay, um, with those comments made, um, oh, timing. Um, Mr. West, your last day is April 23rd, um, and Ms. Bryant begins on May 24th, so that does leave a gap of basically one month, um, and I want to let the public know that we are working on a transition plan. We expect to um, maybe take pauses in some of our nice-to-have and discretionary projects during that leadership transition, but essential borough functions and borough management will continue during that, that time. And um, a detailed plan uh, will be uh, worked out internally. And I will have more information for you on that at our April 21st meeting, which I will make publicly. Um, Ms. Mayor, do you have any comments this evening? I do, thank you, thank you very much. Um, first, I'd like to, to thank Matt West for everything he's done for this borough while he's been here. And um, he's, he's not gone yet, and we'll have another meeting before he goes. but. Um, yeah, Matt, you've been terrific and you've served this borough well and New Britain is, uh, is lucky to have you. Um, at the same time, uh, I'm excited for the addition of Samantha Bryant. I think uh, having uh, interviewed her and, and met her, uh, we will be in excellent hands and I'm looking forward to her, her stewardship 
uh, of our business uh, in the future. And I think uh, I, I'm, I'm excited for, for the new events, new, new, our new future. A um, couple other brief announcements. Uh, good news to everybody. The um, vaccines uh, for COVID are going to become available to everybody over 16 uh, starting uh, April 19th. So I would encourage everybody to make appointments and, uh, and do what they can to get themselves vaccinated the faster. And the more we can get vaccinated, the more we can start getting back to business as usual uh, in the borough and everywhere. Uh, so uh, please keep, keep that date in mind and make your appointments accordingly. Um, secondly, I have a, sep a totally separate update. I just wanna let the public know that we will be updating police training. Um, we had mentioned we wanted to do cultural awareness, cultural awareness and unbiased policing training last year. However, due to COVID, much of that uh, training was uh, canceled and was not available, but we are looking to have all our police officers updated in, in these areas of training as soon as we can. Uh, and looking forward to having uh, continuing police uh, education. So thank you very much. Okay, th thank you. Um, we'll move to, uh, we have no land development to discuss this evening. Um, I will note I did receive some letters regarding uh, Marion Avenue development. And uh, I know that the planning commission is working with the applicant to, uh, you know, uh, guide this project in the best interests of the community. Um, we have no presentations this evening. Any information items, Mr. West, or any other members of council? I don't have any, thank you. Okay, so we'll move to committee reports, infrastructure. Mr. Bush. Sure. Um, we heard about some, so we have upcoming uh, storm sewer repairs on Haverford Avenue. And I think the, the current plan is to incorporate uh, some of the sidewalk work. We have money budgeted for sidewalk repairs for borough owned sidewalks. Um, so uh, we're, it's gonna be going out to bid, I think for this summer, uh, of the project to replace the storm sewer and replace broken segments of sidewalk on Haverford and possibly I think this uh, the entry into borough hall, do some work on the, on the entryway there. It's an upcoming project. Um, we had a, a discussion with the Parks and Rec Board and the NAA. They came to uh, talk about some of their requests. Uh, Parks and Rec Board uh, is interested in getting some new signs for the park. They're particularly motivated to uh, remind people that bicycle riding is not permitted uh, inside the park. Uh, it damages the baseball fields and damages the, the athletic fields in general. But they have uh, a number of other um, things that they would like to be put on some signs. Um, they were asking for, I think, 13 signs uh, at various points around uh, Narberth Park, about all the entry points, basically, uh, laying out some rules. Um, so uh, I think Matt uh, suggested that uh, we may need to look at our um, parks uh, code before we did any new signs. Uh, so Matt, you just took a look at the code. I feel it's. Uh... I, I, I mentioned this in the uh, Public Health and Safety Committee. If you're looking for a light read, go and look at our Parks and Recreation Code. It's an easy breezy um, one pager. So um, it really, it, it's not restrictive. The only thing that it restricts is animals in the parks. So um, if we're looking for restrictive signage, I would encourage council to consider updating its ordinances to be more restrictive. Therefore, we can enforce um, those things and we, by putting the signs up. Thank you, Matt. That that was um, something I felt strongly about <clears throat> and expressed at the infrastructure meeting as well. I understand that just to be fair with the Parks and Recreation uh, Board uh, is, is concerned that if the signs are predicated on anything else, they'll never happen. They sounded um, a little down on the prospects that we could follow through. Um, I, I told them that I could, so we could suggest to council at the workshop meeting that we would agree to, 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 to make sure that we have the funds in the budget and that they're set aside in our parks budget for those signs so that they know that we really will produce them. Um, but I was not comfortable creating signs and then potentially replacing them in a year, which was 
something that that the board had suggested. I, I agree with you, Matt, that we want to get our ducks in a row before we start uh, sending signs to the manufacturer and putting them up. So thank you for for checking into the, the existing regulations. Uh, in that case, I think what we need to do is have uh, the what I would suggest is have the Parks and Recreation Board sit down with um, John Walco and somebody from the borough um, and talk over what should go in there so we can update the code and then get the signs put up. Um, okay. Is that something that you would like to have, uh, you know, sort of committee to directly to Mr. Walco handle, or is it something that uh, would wait until Ms. Bryant is on boarded to manage? I'm not sure it's going to be controversial. I, I don't know. I, I feel like John could probably handle it, but what, what do you, do you have an opinion? <laughs> I, I think, I think John is competent to handle it, but it just would require a, a as committee chair, maybe you interface directly with him for right now, um, okay. rather than delegating it to the office. And I would just encourage you to consider, you know, what's already out there, in other municipalities of like size. It's, you know, it's not, this is not, you know, we're not re you know, we're not creating a wheel from scratch. Um, I think the best approach would be to just find a municipality that is like size, look at their parks and rec regs, use that as the starting point. What do you like? What don't you like? I find it a lot easier to edit that instead of trying to create something from, from scratch. The Parks and Rec has looked at this and they did come up with a, a drafted set of rules uh, at one point, um, I forget it was last year or the year before. So they, they have, they've thought about this and they have some suggestions. Um, so I think, uh, all right, I will, uh, I will uh, have them uh, talk to John and then hopefully bring that back. Um, they also brought up the issue of the tennis courts. Uh, they, uh, they, their recommendation is that we resurface the tennis courts at a cost of about 120 to 160 thousand dollars. They uh, suggest removing one of the tennis courts and replacing it with two pickleball courts. Um, this has been, uh, you know, they've, they've been uh, pricing this out. They do not believe that there is significant USTA grant funding. They're willing to look into other grant funding possibilities, um, but it's their, it's their strong belief that the tennis courts uh, should be repaired. Um, we didn't really, we, you know, we didn't make a recommendation on this from infrastructure because there are several other um, parks and rec priorities that are coming out of the KCBA report. Um, so uh, what we'd like is for them to come back and, um, Sort of go to that KCBA report uh, and go through the um, the suggestions there with an eye toward bringing those into the, the long term capital plan, um, so that we have these projects sort of on the books. Uh, so I think we're we're not quite ready to discuss the uh, the tennis court issue right now. Mm -hmm. um, they were also not ready to discuss the the skateboarding equipment. I think the next step there is going to be for us to appraise it. Uh, and or not have you know have it inspected, and then get a sense of how much it would cost if we were to uh, repair and install some of the skateboard equipment on our property, um, just so we have a better sense of you know what this would cost to the borough. So um, I'd like to recommend that we go ahead and inspect uh, and sort of get a, a better sense of the cost of this uh, skateboarding equipment that's been offered to us. Right. Oh, Fred, do you want questions at the end or each topic? Um, why don't you go here now? Because the next one's going to be okay. entirely different. I had my little hand emoji up, which is. Oh, hard. I'm sorry. I didn't notice uh, it. Mara, it was color hard. than I was building. Go uh, ahead. Yeah, it's hard to say. Um, well, I guess my, my question was with signs to just go back a, a bit um, is to ask in the sign consideration, can we expand our mask ordinance signage in the park? So I actually have a straddling question for you at infrastructure and how do we do uh, welcome to Narberth. We want a healthy community. We have a mask ordinance sign in multiple locations. My second question will be during the public health and safety committee report to say, how can we then practice the community policing model um, in which we can, um, we can demonstrate, you know, before we move to enforcement, um, 
relationships with folks, hopefully on the basketball courts and the baseball fields and the gazebos that folks um, can abide by C CDC recommendations and ma mask up um, and, and safely gather outside. So I love the, I love the art masks or the art, art uh, signs that uh, the borough office developed for the, the mask ordinance. Can we just get a few more yeah. of those? Yeah, uh, uh, Fred, we, we just discussed this actually, Cindy, in public health. And um, so our committee is recommending that, um, that we install more signs in support of the mask ordinance in the park. And we talked about banners uh, that might, might hold up better. Thanks. That's what I said. I knew it straddled both committee reports there. Yeah, I mean, I'm hoping that those signs will be temporary and the ones that we have at the entrances explicitly rules will be more more permanent. So um, does that answer your question, Cindy? OK. Sure. sure, yeah, signage, yes. And then then I would like to hear about how, how we can safely reopen courts and enforce our mask ordinance. Um, and I suppose that'll come in our next committee report, Public Health and Safety. Yeah, we haven't really discussed that uh, in infrastructure. Um, and then the, the, the final topic that came up in infrastructure was there's a, a res several residents uh, from Williams Avenue that were uh, unhappy with uh, the, the, snow, the effect of the snow emergency route. They were saying it, it caused a lot of problems uh, in, to, for parking and for digging themselves out of the parking. And they questioned whether they needed to be on the, on the snow emergency route as a, designated as a snow emergency route. So it turns out that we have an ordinance determining who's on a snow emergency route and Williams Ave isn't in that ordinance. I mean, they're not part of that ordinance. Um, Jim Spear said that his, his block is a snow emergency block. It's not in the ordinance. So clearly our ordinance needs to be updated. Um, I think that the suggestion is that Public Works is gonna look at what they're currently doing and uh, who, you know, wh whether there are streets that can be removed, whether there are streets that should be added and then we'll, we'll bring the uh, borough code kind of up to reality uh, later this year. So the idea that by the time it's time to plow again uh, in the winter, we'll have things sorted out. Uh, and that's it from uh, infrastructure. Any other questions for infrastructure? All right, we'll move to finance and administration. Councilor Rickards. Hi. Um, so we had a borough manager update um, and Matt, feel free to chime in here if um, you wanna update us with anything from our recent financial audit. Um, it is progressing and Matt explained there were um, delays for COVID across the state. This is not um, a Narberth issue. There were some IT network um, issues, but the state audit of non-uniform and uniform plan requires state evaluation every three years. Um, and we are in the midst of that. Um, Matt, do you have anything to update? No, we had um, the closing documents, the closing reports. It's now um, being finalized um, at the mandate level at the state auditors, uh, auditor general office um, before it gets a fork put in it and is called final, final. Um, so once it becomes final, final, council will get a copy of uh, the pension audits to your point. Um, the, the Borough's non-uniform pension um, service provider, uh, Pennsylvania Municipal Retirement System, PMRS. They've been having technical issues. Um, one of the recurring findings, and this is gonna happen on every municipal, every municipality's pension audit this year, they have still yet to provide financial um, reporting for 2019 and member statements. <clears throat> and so, the uh, state auditor's general office was not able to adequately perform the the audit so that's going to be a finding and that's going to be a finding on every municipality's uh, pension audit this year who has pmrs so it's just a it, it's an issue they've worked directly with the state auditor worked directly with pmrs it's a known issue and it's just going to be a, a, a finding there are some other things on the audit that are, are some findings that are not, um, you know, really, uh, they're not detrimental, but some more housekeeping things that I think with the next audit cycle will be taken care of. 
Um, from the financial audit standpoint, we're still waiting on the 2019 financial audit. There are two final steps. Um, I think we're just waiting on one letter from the borough's labor attorney at this point, but essentially it's done. Um, we are awaiting that final letter from the labor attorney. And once that's done, we'll make an arrangement for uh, the borough's auditor to present those findings at an upcoming meeting. Thank you. Um, we discussed after our last FNA meeting, um, council agreed to support funding, additional funding to clean the restrooms um, so they could be open in the park. Um, we, we all um, gave Matt um, the, the green light to go ahead with that. I believe Mr. Harmon um, was going to provide a budget as soon as possible for weekend cleaning um, as well as a second cleaning at the park so we could safely open that up. Um, Matt, I don't know if there's an update since our last meeting on that. Yeah, so we have been, uh, I should say, Ed has been actively um, trying to get some quotes. We got one quote and I said, go back to the drawing board. <laughs> I just didn't think, I thought it was too much. Um, so Ed, I don't know if you have any more to add to that, but I believe we're, he's still trying to find um, some more quotes. Yes, uh, thank you, Matt. I'm still in the middle of researching quotes. I have an appointment tomorrow uh, with another cleaning service. Uh, the issue is the weekend, the weekend shifts, uh, trying to find a suitable service that is in the neighborhood that will, would be able to accomplish that and accomplish it at a reasonable cost. Uh, but I should have something uh, to the committee pretty soon. Thank you. Um, we also was announced the Federalist Stimulus Plan um, that it looks like Narberth will hopefully um, receive approximately $429,000. It's $1,000 per person. It's unclear if funds are restricted yet. It, it appears as if it'll be 50% year one, 50% year two. Um, details are gonna, going to be forthcoming as we all learn about this collectively um, together. Uh, we had a Narberth Avenue bridge status report from a fiscal perspective. Um, Matt assured us that COVID has pushing the timeline back on everything. Um, we were waiting for the right of way acquisition for 1.5 parcels still, um, that would be Amtrak and 198 Elmwood. Uh, the utilities on the bridge will take a year to relocate uh, before the bridge can come down. And Matt just reviewed for us, you know, 80% of this is paid by the federal government, 15% of the state and 5% of the borough. Um, we did request an FNA that request that we update just citizens on the status of the bridge um, once a month in the flash email so folks know where we are in this process. Um, we started FNA with actually a review of the year and then set priorities moving forward, particularly because we knew we were gaining a new manager. Um, in the past year, we have developed the NBA matching grant. Um, thus far, the NBA has coordinated micro matching grants with Twice as Nice, McShay's, Ryan Christopher's, the Greeks for approximately $2,400. Um, FNA continues to explore um, tax credit tools um, that we could use to speak to our comprehensive plan in aging in place and meeting diverse economic statuses. Um, Fred did a deep dive and exploration into the EIT and has continued to do that. Um, we will be workshopping some of those ideas in our next meeting and have something to do with you all. Um, I, I just want to underscore the amount of research Fred has done on this. And, and most of it you all never hear of because you hit a dead end. Um, but, but Fred continues, really continues to look to how, how do we use the tools available to us to meet the, um, the goals and expectations of our comprehensive plan. Um, we will look once we have a new police contract and analysis of possible scenarios and implications of that. Um, priorities moving ahead, FNA um, really wanted to come up with a solid plan of with a new management, what we would focus our efforts on. And the first is really to revisit a grant philosophy, process and support system with the new manager. Um, we'd like to suggest that we map these grant applications to capital improvements and comprehensive plans. Um, we actually very intentionally, as you all know, but the public should know, we very intentionally looked for a manager with a history of aggressive grant application and success, and we have hired one. So uh, we really look forward to, to planning that cooperative process with Samantha when she starts. 
We'd like to initiate a strategic partnership between finance and administration and the public health and safety committee to develop a new that new budget line that we set under public, public safety that looked at the built environment as a public health and safety tools. I think that there are ways that we can really demonstrate how our two committees work closely together, which will ultimately be infrastructure as well. Another priority is to review stormwater costs by proposing impervious space, tax, or funding mechanism. Um, and again, we want to review our communication plans and transparency. Um, I'm adding another issue for, for us to discuss at this time that I had put out, gosh, probably last week um, to committee members in planning the agenda for the next meeting was um, thoughts on adding um, some sort of policy, procedure, resolution to reaffirm um, NARBIRTH's commitment to equity of transgender, non-binary, gender non-conforming persons, as we see nationally legislation coming to, to very intentionally ban um, people from sports, from sports. Um, I thought that that was something we could workshop in FNA and then bring a recommendation or thoughts to council. However, as you may have read um, just last night, in addition to the seven states who are moving these, this um, really discriminatory practice nationally, which has been a reaction to um, a federal recommitment to affirming these rights, um, our own state of Pennsylvania is moving legislation forward in that. Um, so I felt like perhaps it was um, advantageous for us to move this right to borough council. Um, it's, uh, it's unfortunate Mr. Walco isn't here because um, John crafted for us a really, uh, a really fabulous resolution that contextualizes um, a reaffirmment for Narberth Borough to per resolution adopt an inclusive sports and activity policy that works to remove barriers and improve participation for everyone by fostering welcoming environments for transgender, non-binary, gender non-conforming participants, including youth participants. Um, he again, he frames this under the context of recent um, national legislation and more currently state legislation um, into reaction of President Joe Biden has issued an executive order calling on the federal government to prohibit such de demonstration and sexual orientation and gender identity, um, in which actually, and um, John points out explicitly stating that, quote, children should be able to learn without worrying about whether they will be denied access to the restroom, locker room, or school sports. Um, I did send this to you all right before our meeting. I appreciate if you didn't have time to look over it. Um, it is just a resolution, again, reaffirming our commitment to an inclusive um, use of public land and activities. The suggestion is if we would like to adopt this resolution, then we, we give this to the HRC, to the Human Resource Commission, and we say, we'd like you to take a look at this and then bring a recommendation back to us to says, you know, should this be a policy? Should this be a permit policy? Or should this be stronger and, and some sort of legislation or ordinance? Um, so that's something I'd like us to discuss now and figure out a, a timeline on where we stand and a recommendation of, of sending that to HRC and really using our citizens um, to help determine our next steps or, or offer us a recommendation. Okay. So uh, we, we, we received that resolution. Uh, the question is really, what, what does council do with it next, right? Um, do we want to send that to HRC? And I know um, separately, Mo was going to bring up later in the meeting um, some other matters to send to HRC. I won't steal that thunder, but I'll just put it in, put it in everybody's mind. Any thoughts? I, I, I like value that resolution very much, Cindy and Aaron. And um, I think that it would be very good for us to let it sit with us at least into our, until our um, next meeting, but also to ask, I think further to ask the HRC. I mean, I, I could imagine voting for that resolution this evening, but I think, I think it's only fair to let it um, you know, sleep on it a bit, but also to have the HRC look at, at how existing rules, both 
state rules, national rules, and local rules would help us create policies that are congruent with that resolution um, going forward. So I think I think we need some advice and counsel of the HRC to to look at the implications of that resolution for the borough. Well, it just I do want to underscore that the resolution only states that Narberth Borough Council has declared that its public policy of Narberth Borough in part to assure equal opportunities to all individuals and to safeguard their rights to public accommodations without regard to their actual or perceived characteristics. This just reaffirms and quite honestly is in response to all the anti-discrimination transgender legislation moving forward in our own, I mean, Philadelphia is one of the sponsors or somebody in Philadelphia. The resolution takes no action other than reaffirming that commitment. You know, I would suggest if we all feel comfortable, if, if that is in fact where we stand, um, that then we pass it to the HRC and say, okay, given that this is our, our belief and our commitment, what do we do with this? From, from a, what's your recommendation from permitting to policy or possible legislation? If you were to make a motion, I would second that motion. <laughs> so I just wanna say that when this came up, I asked John, I said, well, you know, are there any other municipalities that have done something like this that I can look at and see how they've approached the issue? He said he wasn't aware of any. So, I mean, this, this is sort of a novel um, approach from what, I, what I'm aware of. That's why I, I, I'd like to hear HRC's take on it before voting on anything formal. I think that this is kind of their, this is what they are there to advise us on. And, you know, John ordinarily is, is great for advising us on this stuff, but he, you know, this was novel to him. Yeah, he, crafted, he did a nice job of crafting it. Yeah, I, I, of crafting I it. it. He did a beautiful job. This is like the plastics ordinance, quite honestly, where I think we're the borough that says we want to, we want to be the first because we are committed to this, and then I, I suspect others will follow. And, and you know, look, I appreciate that this was thrown on your plate, plate last minute, and quite honestly, it was something on our radar. And then last night to open the paper and see that this absolutely discriminatory policy and practices are happening in our own state. I felt like it was timely for us as a council to resolve that we are an anti-discrimination community. And in fact, we will support any child in any sort of activity that they participate in our public space and place. Um, and so Fred, I think that this is just a reflection of you do so much homework in your due diligence and I, I really do appreciate the uneasiness of this. And I don't, I will make the motion. I don't want to force a vote if you all want to say, hey, can you give me some time to read this? You know, to look over. Well, I don't, I don't know that we need a vote. If there's a general consensus that we as a council want to send this to the HRC to be uh, reviewed and get back to us, uh, I, I, I mean, we could just do that. Um, but I, I was going to say, Mona is my next. We could also do this in, in what I'll call 10.5 on our agenda. Um, when uh, Mona, go ahead. I'll let you take the floor. Um, I I was also going to say I think John Walco did an excellent job. I personally would support it in the language that it's written in currently. I understand also people's will to to refer to HRC first, but I, I just want to clarify that in our human relations ordinance we ban discrimination already against people on the basis of, uh, you can't discriminate against people on the basis of gender identity or sexual orientation. So I think this resolution is, is simply reaffirming that in the face of people who are targeting children and teenagers who are already in a very at highly at-risk group. And we're reaffirming that people in our borough, people who use our borough property um, cannot use that property for activities if they are if they are violating our own human relations ordinance, which protects people on the basis of, of gender identity and sexual orientation. So it's 2021. It's, it's shameful that people are targeting vulnerable children and teenagers for discrimination for their own political gain. But I also understand that's why we have a human a human relations commission. So I understand both sides of this. I don't think there's anyone here at this table. I, I feel comfortable speaking for council here that um, 
uh, motion, and I think uh, we've already voted, not maybe not each one of us sitting at this table, when we established the Human Relations Commission and established the kinds of discrimination that we would not stand for as a borough. Um, but I do think there's an opportunity here to get a little more uh, community involvement, a little more expert involvement uh, to, uh, to see maybe there's an angle to expand those protections beyond which we have uh, envisioned in this, in this brief cycle uh, of having John craft this ordinance. That would be my hope. So hold, let's hold this until we get to 10.5, which is a new agenda item between public comment and announcements, uh, because I think that's where we can take some action. Cindy, you all right with that? Yeah, that's fine. Um, and just the last point is um, we uh, will return to the quarterly kind of meet and greet with council. And um, hopefully that will be an introduction with um, Samantha, our new borough manager. So folks should stay tuned for um, a June meet and greet event. Hopefully that can be in the park perhaps um, where folks will have an invitation to meet our new manager. Great, thank you. Um, Public Health and Safety, Councillor McGreevy. Thanks, Aaron. Uh, so a few updates uh, with regard to the EAC recommendations. So Matt updated us uh, earlier tonight that the streetlight project is kind of back on track or almost, you know, we've been delayed uh, because of the pandemic, um, but Matt has been working hard to get us uh, to, to get that going this month. And um, we also have our first EV charging station installed behind the library. Uh, we're waiting for Pico, I think, for it to be fully operational. Um, and Matt, you can correct me on any of these details. Uh, we're also going to be um, uh, rejoining ICLEI so that we can track our carbon emissions. And um, this, will, this software will allow us to see the reduction in uh, carbon emissions with the new streetlight projects. Uh, the EAC and the CAN group have put together a flyer to advise Narberth residents on switching their power to uh, renewable electricity. And so the committee has recommended that uh, we use some of our climate action implementation fund to uh, help with that distribution. Uh, so just printing, printing some of those flyers and then the EAC will be distributing them. Um, okay. okay, so then we, we've talked for quite a while about the price crossing bollard, which is um, a kind of perpetual problem. Um, it has been uh, damaged again, and so it needs to be replaced. Uh, but we have been meeting with the um, Homeowners Association, and Matt has advised us as manager on how best to honor the original uh, plans. And so I, it's my understanding the bollard will be replaced. Um, but you know, it doesn't seem to be a very good solution. So. We're gonna keep uh, looking for something better. And I've asked the HOA if they could bring us a proposal to our committee, and then we could bring that to the council. Um, so there's ro uh, the road sign review process is going to begin, uh, my understanding in, in the next infrastructure meeting with when the traffic engineer joins us. So we've had several comments about road signs coming to our committee, public health and safety. But you know, we'll, we will work together with Fred's committee uh, later this month. Um, OK, and then also the chief updated us on the MOU with Laura Marion. And that is nearly finished. And I think it will be ready for us at our business meeting uh, later this month. All right, thank you. Any questions for public health and safety? Hearing none, we'll go to public comment. Um, I'm reading here some 
Spear, Mr. Gallagher, please. Ms. Fortner. Hey, Aaron, you may have Any to comment? start your video off. I'm sorry, Aaron, you're, you're breaking up every time you, when hmm. you speak, you might have to Sure. Ms. Fortner. Uh, no comment. Uh, Ms. Scanlon. Any comment? Well, hello, Council. I would like to um, just again reiterate the um, the signage on the streets. It was brought up in the safety committee about uh, it going up for um, uh, review and having an outline in the next month or so. Just how important it will be to have Sabine Avenue and the one-way signs replaced. Um, Bob had mentioned that other streets like North Arbor Avenue have six or seven a day and asked what the threshold is for acceptable one way, wrong way drivers. And I just want this council to know at a park, the acceptable level for one way drivers should be zero because we're talking how many children are going to this park. This Sabine Avenue Park is so busy these days. It's wonderful to see how many families are enjoying the park. So I just want to, again, ask this council to really look seriously on the safety of the kids at Sabine Park by getting the streets straightened out so we don't have any one-way drivers anymore. And then my other question is, over at the Sabine parking lot, there are about eight things that are parked there long-term. There's a boat, there's a trailer that hasn't moved in probably five or six years. There's some trucks that haven't moved in a while. If the borough is going to allow parking up there, long-term parking, why not charge for it? Because you know, it's taking up spaces. You're doing a service letting these people park their cars or trucks in, and trailers and boats indefinitely, make some money on it. Charge $100 a month. Because do you want to have long-term parking up there, a trailer that hasn't moved in five years? Is it, you know, I'm sure the guy knows it's up there but it might not be a bad idea. Figure if you have eight things parked up there at a hundred bucks a month, it's $800 a year, multiply, or $800 a month, multiply by 12 months. That's putting a little more money in the, uh, in the coffers for the borough. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Winston, any comments? No, not tonight. Mr. O'Keefe. Oh yes, uh, thank you for uh, having me on here. Um, First of all, um, for people who don't know who I am, I am uh, David O'Keefe and I am the Narvith Girls Basketball League Director. And um, I have been, um, over the past couple months, I've been emailing back and forth uh, the mayor and I appreciate, you know, the reply from, from Andrea. I really appreciate um, everything that you've been doing to, again, trying to open up our courts um, for, for the borough and, uh, and, and obviously for our league. But um, you know, I, I really just want to, you know, get, get down to business here of, of what it's going to take. And this is just right now as a question to open up the courts for our league to play starting in May. Because I'm at the point right now where we have hundreds of registrations of girls who, you know, over the past 37 years of the Narvis Girls Basketball League playing um, that, that really count on playing in our league outside. Now, I will also make another note that the state of Pennsylvania has opened up all playgrounds, all sports, inside and out, especially outside, because obviously it's safer for sports. And I'm still wondering why our courts aren't opened up yet for play. <clears throat> so I, I did send over a list of um, also COVID-19 protocols that we would definitely put in place. And... Um, you know, being a, a basketball official and coach and, and everything above the, you know, the line there from, from a basketball perspective, um, I have, um, you know, tallied up all the protocols that the basketball commissioners and directors that have done for indoor sports and put them together for our outdoor league. And um, I did share them with Andrea. And um, I would love to share them with you. If I could do that in the chat, I can send them over to you or I can send them in an email. But I, I really just want you to hear us. And, um, you know, I, I really think, you know, we, we know last year was obviously just a, a crazy year. We understand that we had to shut down the courts. But with all the protocols that are in place today and the safety measurements that are in place today, the mass mandates, um, the health concern for these kids, I mean, they need to get out. 
They need to get out of their house. They need to start playing sports. And these girls really just count on our league. I have parents emailing me left and right every single day. When's the, you know, when's the league going to start? And again, I don't have an answer for them. And, and right now we're in almost mid April. Our league usually starts, you know, the first week in May. And um, I really just want to see what we can do as a borough to get our, our, you know, our league going. And again, and I'm not saying I don't care about the other sports that are going on or other, any other individuals that are going on, but I think the protocols that we can put in place, at least for our league to start, we can put in place without any other obstacles being, whether it's temporary fencing, we can, you know, we can limit the number of, you know, spectators that come into the fenced area. You know, we can, you know, we obviously we have the mask mandate and, um, you know, sterilization and, and, and all that kind of stuff that we, that we can put in place from the protocols that I've listed out here. Um, so I kind of want to hear your thoughts. Um, I'm not, obviously I'm not expecting a yes answer <laughs> tonight. I would love to hear a yes answer, you know, in the very near future, but, um, you know, we, we just, um, I just really want you to hear, I, I really want you to hear me. That's all. I really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Ms. Mayor, I will allow you to respond. All right. Uh, I thank David. He's been very cordial and we've been going back and forth and I've been trying to explain my thought process uh, in terms of opening of the courts. I have explained that we are not able to open the courts for one segment of the community and not open to everybody else. There's no way to do that. The courts will either be open to all or close to all. Um, we're not putting up fencing and allowing keys to only certain segments of the community. I think that's not fair. I think we're not going to do that. Um, I think uh, in terms of addressing basketball, basketball is a particular close contact sport in which most people are in each other's faces, you know, where sweat and spit and, and everything gets in each other's faces. There is no ability to have distance between the players uh, down there. Uh, you are you are touching a common ball constantly back and forth. Um, so I think it's a unique sport as opposed to baseball or running or m any of the m thousands of other ways people can get exercise. It's one specific exercise. So I think it's the CDC risks it as a highly dangerous sport, whereas other sports are much less dangerous. Um, I think looking at the CDC guidelines, I know we have a mask mandate, but but we do not have, frankly, the staff to stand down there all day, every day, and, and make sure people, ensure that people follow the mask mandate. Um, currently, there are variants on the COVID illnesses that are making the numbers in Montgomery County go up. In fact, they're making the numbers in Pennsylvania and around the country go up. Um, we are in a race between the vaccinations that are available to the public and, and the variants getting a hold. My thoughts are, my job as mayor is not just to provide for sports for kids, but to pr protect the entire community. And when people play basketball, they don't necessarily live at the courts. They don't just live there. They play basketball, they, they play amongst some friends, and then they go out into the community, um, which is where you worry about communal spread. I want the most vulnerable in our population to be able to get vaccinated and have an opportunity to, to protect themselves, including the adults in the community, uh, so that they have an opportunity to protect themselves. So we protect ourselves from variants, from the communal spread, uh, and from uh, increase in disease. I've gone over these, this information with the uh, um, emergency management team every month. We go over this. It includes Matt. It includes Chief Gallagher, includes someone from Narbeth Ambulance. Um, we have many, many different opinions. I think it is the, is, I know people want to play basketball. I get it. I'm getting it from all over. And, and I know kids need exercise. There's a million ways to exercise that don't involve getting such close contact. I wouldn't recommend wrestling right now either. I think it's a bad idea. Dr. Fauci was on TV this week saying it's sports is a primary way that this disease is spreading high school sports. Um, so I think the prudent thing to do is, is the vaccination is opening up to everybody over 16 as of April 19th. I want to give the adults in the community an opportunity to get themselves immunized and protected uh, from this disease. I, I, I understand there's a rush to open these courts, 
the, the disease is not on our, our schedule. And I think it's important to look at to look at the numbers in Narbeth, which we have kept amazingly low compared with other communities that have opened their courts. And I just disagree with that decision. Um, that's where my thought process is. That's where I'm coming in. I think it's the prudent thing to do to allow adults to get in the community to get vaccinated and everybody overseas so that we can protect the most vulnerable in the community. Thank you, Andrea. Um, Mr. Callan, do you have any comment for the public? No. All right, thank you. I will close public comment. I'll move to a newly created agenda item, which is 10.5. Um, and I will ask uh, Councillor Al Shacks, you had something you wanted to discuss also related to HRC. Right, so I guess we're giving the HRC um, a lot of work, to, a lot of new work tonight, maybe. Um, I, I, can, I guess. I think they're up to the task. Yeah, I think so too, I think so too. Um, in my time as a resident of Narberth, as well as in the time that I was campaigning for council and even more so since I've been on council, I've unfortunately heard and witnessed upsetting examples of prejudice and racism in our community. And I've heard stories from both residents and visitors about this. And I, I think it's, you know, I love Narberth, but like every community, we are not immune to racism. And so I think it's really important that we, um, we already have a human relations ordinance that protects people from discrimination. But I think in our world where we live in a nation that has suffered hundreds of years of um, brutal racism and other kinds of prejudices, we need to do more than just saying, no, discrimination is not okay. I think it's really important to affirmatively work for equity and racial justice and civil rights and equal opportunity. So um, my suggestion is, could we ask the Human Relations Commission um, to work on, on how we could do that? I mean, that would involve things like looking at examining, you know, what uh, systemic barriers there are in our own community that maybe we could dismantle. How could we rethink our decision-making processes um, and, and advance equity and anti-racism in our own community. So I was hoping that that was something that we could also ask the Human Relations Commission to work on and, and bring forth um, potential resolutions or, um, or ordinances for us that we could work to actively um, advance that agenda. Yeah, I would support that, Mona. Great. Thank you. Um, so, any any opposition or um, sort of comment to you know to add or or change uh, Mona's statement, Fred? Well, I might just suggest that that would be a, a longer term goal, right? This and that we're, you know, I think that the ordinance, the you know the, the uh, trans inclusion. Um, that we're discussing might be a, a, a shorter term goal for them yeah, to two, work on immediately. Two separate. Yeah. Right. Yeah, absolutely. They just both I support, have to I support, be HRC. Yeah. I, I agree I'd like with the further, I'd like to add further that I, I would hope that, that's, that, that every member and every appointed member of the Human Relations Committee feels that that's their task all the time and that, that we make that clear okay. that we support them in, in you know, surfacing any concerns that they might have ongoingly for all time in re related to your specific uh, language there, Monica. Thank you so much for bringing that up. Um, so I will take a motion if uh, someone would like to make it to forward both the trans inclusion policy as was drafted by Mr. Walco and the uh, request to consider a, a broader um, and more, um, say, Im embedded in the very fabric of the borough anti-racist policy um, to the Human Relations Commission for consideration uh, with also sort of a timeline expectation that the first is, is we're hoping for a quicker response um, than the second, which might be a more complex plan, although I'm always a fan of phased plans. You know, let's start something now and continue to grow and develop it over time. It's a lot of words, but maybe someone wants to pick that up and we can we can get that on the across the business table here tonight. 
I'll take a stab at it. Go for it. Um, so I still move that um, we reaffirm um, our desire to create an inclusive and supportive learning and social environment environment and establish policies that protect transgender, non-binary, gender non-conforming athletes and participants of all other activities on our public property and ask that we forward our resolution to the Human Relations Committee and ask them to please take a look and offer a recommendation for a spectrum of whether it be permit policies or legislations to counsel for our next workshop meeting. I also move, Aaron. Yeah. Am I doing keep going? Work? Okay. No, no. Um, yeah, keep going. I, I also move that HRC provide um, language and a mission statement which communicates to us how they will review policies, practices, and reviews that address issues of systemic racism and any policies or practices which could um, inadvertently continue to reinforce such structures. Uh, I second that well-crafted motion. Extraordinary. <laughs> yeah, we're good on the fly. Uh -huh. All right. All, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Lost you again. Yeah, we got eyes. Okay, uh, the eyes have it. Thank you. Um, any announcements this evening? Agenda item eleven. Hearing none, I'll take a motion to adjourn. And move we adjourn. Second. Seconded. All in favor. Good night, all. Good night everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Good night.